With six days left in the event, I finally 100%ed the final Summoner Pain quest, and I'm here to give y'all a summary and a guide based on my experiences. I gotta preface this by saying I'm not the best player, and not even close, but I managed to fully explore the quest without using units, and that was a win in my book. Also, if you're interested, all my Summoner Pain final week streams are available on the channel. All the paths were done live, so you can refer to those if you're still unclear about some of the details. To me, yes, very much worth it. 15k extra 6 star shards, half a T5 CC selector, 3 T5B, 10 T2A, and most importantly, 12 total T4 CC selectors. T4 CC has been a massive bottleneck for myself and many other endgame players. If you're in a situation where you have plenty of T4 CC, beware. The shortage is coming for you, sooner or later. Be conservative with them, never let them expire, never trade them with that awful 2 to 1 ratio. But is exploration worth it for everyone? Well, that depends on your roster and your skill level. If, you know, both of those combined can result in your run not costing a fortune. Venom. Venom himself can be defeated using anyone as long as you don't knock him down. Hell, you can even knock him down if you have a debuff heavy champion and that way he'd be dead in no time. And Hydra Adaptoid is straightforward, as long as you bait his specials as little as possible. Do 4 hit incomplete combos, go into a hard block, bait a heavy or go for a reparry and mow him down that way. The node going from Venom to the Grandmaster is also not very consequential. You're gonna have trouble against the Grandmaster if you haven't fought him in a while for the first time during you know, your first few runs, but you will get better at the fight as you keep going. First off, I gotta say, I don't regret any of my pass and attacker choices. I do believe I used the best champions in my roster for the pass given my skill level. For the first path, I used rank 3 Apocalypse against Sinister Lane when the quest was first dropped. That run was super rough. I was very much under the weather and the boss was bugged, making him significantly harder. But despite all of that, the path went decently well. Apoc is great versus Sinister. I like going for that SP2, SP1, then SP3 rotation. And he was also good versus Adaptoid, despite having classes advantage and the defender's immunities. I ran 565 Aegon down the Venom path as my second lane, a few days after that first lane clear. This was a much needed confidence booster, for sure. Third path was 565 Hercules versus Darkhawk. He also handled Rogue decently well thanks to his amazing signature ability. Also, you know, overall a relatively smooth path. Fourth path was me going down the Mysterio lane using rank 3 Diablo. And this was definitely a nightmare. All because of that godforsaken rogue. She was truly the only fight I absolutely hated in this entire event. This wasn't one of those I hate this fight for being so tough, but at least I'm still having fun sort of situations. I hated everything about her design especially when paired with her awful, awful AI. Symbiote Supreme was the second to last, and I used my 565 Immortal Hulk, who absolutely demolished Supreme in one rotation, by far the fastest option for him, but then I got absolutely demolished by Ghost and her trash defensive AI. And rank 3 Ultron absolutely cleaned up the final path. Emma and Ghost got soloed by him, and he proved to be one of the best options for the Grandmaster. Who am I to give advice on a fight I have never soloed? Well, I feel the advice of an average player with average reflexes and stamina could be helpful to some. I had the best experience versus him when using Ultron. Diablo also did decently well, but the link on Diablo's path really did make the fight a lot harder. My success with Ultron was probably a result of a few factors. I ran my final path with him, the memory of the previous five paths was still pretty fresh, and Ultron was almost built for this fight. The gain a buff, land a crit, and inflict a dot prompt were all super easy to do with him, and of course the regen was amazing. 
And to think I was initially contemplating using Guillotine 2019 for that path. Oh god, that would have been just awful with her critting on every 20th hit. I never really got used to the reverse controls on him and I'm not planning on getting used to it anytime soon. I'm just not too fussed with soloing him. Revives and potions are out there waiting to get used. Also in all your 6 runs there's a pretty high likelihood that you will get wrecked by his SP3 at least once simply because he just really doesn't want to throw specials sometimes. And I want you to know it's gonna be okay. Just, you know, revive and go back in. It happens to all of us. Overall, the best design boss fight in the entire game, in my opinion. One of my favorite events in the history of the game. I hope Summer Pain ends up being used in the future as a template for more similar challenges. The cadence of boss release was perfect, allowing for time to regroup and farm resources between releases. I used the classic difficulty of Variant 7 Chapter 2 Quest 2 to farm revives by the way. The week even allowed for some players to realistically have time to rank up champions that may be useful in taking down the boss. The champion restrictions placed by the objectives were decently realistic and consistently allowed for more than a few counters to emerge. And finally the rewards, they were just truly amazing both for late endgame players and also for many CAF players who got to advance to Thronebreaker thanks to the T5CC selectors. At the same time though, the event unfortunately suffered from the parry and dexterity timing bugs. And I should reiterate, the rogue fight sucked. If you're a perfect player who is perfect all the time, always, that's just great, good for you. You can solo her with basically anyone. But the fight for the rest of us is just a nightmare. Except, you know, if you're using Dragon Man, who's unfortunately not really a good option for Darkhawk or Mysterio in the final week. The Grandmaster bug was also definitely annoying. Especially for folks who jumped in immediately and got to the boss, only to find out he was going to be significantly harder than intended. Sunk costs settled in for those of us who found ourselves in that position, so many just powered through and we just got a tiny compensation package for it, which really didn't feel great given that the bug was a very obvious oversight on the part of the devs. Ending this on a positive note though, something I really loved about the final week was how much better I felt I got as I did more runs. First run was rough, but the last one genuinely felt amazing. The sense of progress was incredible. I hope you all found this quick guide slash summary helpful. If you're still working on the final quest and have any questions, please ask away in the comment section down below. I'll try to answer all of them. Thanks y'all for watching. Hope y'all enjoyed this video and I'll catch y'all later. Bye.